Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're going to take a little closer look on how we measure the mass and the density of the Earth. Now, of course, remember the density of any object is simply equal to the ratio of the mass divided by, by its volume. And um, so let's first figure out how they calculated the mass. So when we drop an object above the Earth's surface and it comes down, we can measure the acceleration to be equal to g. And when we experimentally measure that, let's say we came out to be 9.805 meters per second squared. All right, then we plug that into the equation where the force due to the acceleration to gravity equals the force due to the, uh, the force between any two objects in the universe. So we say that the MA or MG is equal to uh, G times M, big M, divided by the distance between them squared. So we, the force due to Newton's law equals the universal force of gravity. Set those two equal to each other. Right away, we can see that the masses uh, of the object cancel out. And so now all we have to do is find the mass of the Earth. So solve that for M. We get M is equal to G times R squared divided by big G. Moving the R squared over here, the big G down here, and then flipping the equation around. And that, of course, is the one that will go up in here. Uh, so first of all, let's calculate what that is. That's equal to 9.805 uh, meters per second squared. Multiply times the radius, which is 6,378,000 meters. And we have to square that, and we divide the whole thing by g, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. And that will give us the mass in kilograms. So 9.805 uh, times 6378000 squared and divide that by 6.67 e to the 11 minus equals and just what we expect it gives us the mass of the earth 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. There we go. All right. Now we go ahead and we plug that in here. So this is going to go up in here. So at the density is equal to 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilogram. And we divide that by the volume. Now the volume of a sphere, in other words, approximate sphere would be 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. And the radius, of course, is right here. That's 6378000. That's in meters quantity cubed. And of course, that will give us kilograms per cubic meter. And let's see what we get. So divide by 4 times 3, divide by pi, and divide by 6378000 cubed equals, and it turns out that is 5,500 kilograms per cubic meter. So that's how we figured out the density of the Earth, 5,500 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, when you realize that the density of rock, the density of rock is about 2.6, uh, well, I'll convert it to kilograms because I was going to put it in terms of grams, but in terms of kilograms, it's about 2,600 kilograms per cubic meter, and that the density of metal is about 8,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And of course, that depends upon what metal we're dealing with here, but we think it's primarily iron and nickel and so forth. Then you can see that the average of those numbers is approximately 5,500 kilograms per cubic meter. Also take into account, of course, that at the center, the density is actually higher because of the enormous pressure of the Earth towards the center of the Earth. Uh, you can see that the Earth is made up of about half rock and half metal, and that's how we figure that out. Okay, so now you can see how we can use the universal equation of gravity to determine the density of the Earth and also the approximate makeup of the Earth. All interesting stuff.